Welcome to Skippy Low Looks at Hollywood. Today's guests represent Beauty and Braun. The Beauty is the actress who bared her head for the original Star Trek movie. She's the lovely Persis Kambada. The Braun is the actor who bared his muscles playing legendary heroes. He's the virile Ed Fury. And now, to help our guests bear their views, here's your man of the half hour, Skippy Lowe. Persis Kambada. Persis Kambada, what a nice name. Bombay, India? Miss India? Yes. Tell me about yourself. Um, Miss India, good God, that's a great title. Beauty, come I, to California or Hollywood or New York or where? Well, it was a long flight from India. <laughs> I went, I stopped in London for a few years and then New York. Ah, let's get back there. London, Persis Kambada started in London after Miss India? Yes. First film in London? I did my first film in London, uh -huh. uh, but uh, I was modeling in London. Ah. That's why I went to London to do uh, some modeling. I love modeling. Is that a good place to model, to uh, go to London or Milan or, it, you know, where? Well, I think uh, Indian people are very close to the British because of the British Raj, and I decided when I wanted to go away from India right. to model, is I chose England because uh -huh. I spoke the language, and uh, there was some inf affinity with uh, English people. Uh -huh. Growing up in Bombay, what a city to grow up. I mean, purses. I mean, it's, there's a lot of very poor people there on the streets of India and Bombay. You're right. I've been there. You know, they sleep on, we have bag people here in America, but in India, they sleep on newspapers and rain. They get their papers, that is their bed. Tell me about that, growing up like that, seeing that. How did is, if you grow up like this, it doesn't affect you that much, but India is a very, I mean, it's a process of having a palace and a few yards away, you'll see a hut. Right. So, I mean, nowhere in the world you'll see something like that, a huge palace and then a hut. That's not fair to the rest of the people in the world, the human beings, so is it? Who said life was fair? I think you, you come back into this world with karmic experiences uh -huh. and you have to work them out. I see. What's your first film, Persis? Let's go to back to London. What was your first actual film in London? Uh, will be Conspiracy with uh, Sidney Poitier and Michael Caine. Ooh. And Michael I had done a film in India before that. Y you did films in India? Yes. Ah, I didn't know this that. This is why I was wondering when you said first ah, film. I, I see. So you did a lot of films in, because I, th I thought you were Miss India and then went to London. Well, I did a film in India. Uh -huh. I think 16 was a wonderful year for me because I was Miss India. At 16? I, I had done a film in India which won me an award as a Best Actress and I left. Uh, India to go to London. At 16? At 16. How beautiful. So then... That was a few years ago. I mean, Working with Michael Caine. Tell me about it. Oh, he's wonderful. Was it? Yes, both of them, Sydney and Michael. I think Sydney helped me a lot. And uh -huh. when I came to New York, uh, he told me to go to Actor Studio, and that's uh -huh. what I did. Did you study at Actor Studio yes. with Lee Strasberg? Did you really? What year was this, in Persis? It was in 75, and uh -huh. Lee Strasberg was my neighbor. At, uh, in New York. He uh -huh. just lived above me. I see. So. Some of the people uh, used to be around in London. You, I understand you were very young, dating some very international people, Persis. Beautiful girl, 16, Miss India. Who are some of the gentlemen? I, I heard, come on, Persis. I don't want to talk about it. You don't want to it. talk about it? No. Okay, so we won't. Because I haven't met the right person, let me say that. Uh, you haven't met the right person? No. There's not a man in your life right now? No. Persis Kambada, beautiful lady like you, there's not a man in your life? Well, I think right now I'm growing, growing up and pro progressing as a human being. Spiritually. Spiritually. You're in spiritual, you have a spiritual and being. And it's given me a lot of strength, and I'm working that out with I my see. life. I see. It's making me a stronger person. Meditation, healing, uh -huh. I mean, affirmations. Tell me about star strength. Tell me about this. This is Persis Kambada. Star Trek was ah. a wonderful experience for any actress. The original film you were in. How did Persis Kambada, why was this? My investment was $1.99. I walked into Gene Roddenberry's office for an interview right. buying a ball cap. And that's how I walked in. That was a ball cap. No, this that, oh, I you shaved off. You shaved it off, yes. But for my interview, interview I knew. You walked in like that. So it was a $1.99 investment. Really? Mm -hmm. And you got the job right away? 
Well, they uh, did some screen tests, about 600 girls. Uh -huh. And uh, that's how I got the job. I see. Who was the director? Do, uh, Wise? Robert Wise. Robert Wise. They're working wonderful. with Working with Robert Wise. Tell me about that man. What a giant. He is. He's a super giant uh, here in Hollywood. Absolutely. Tell me some of your experiences with him on the set. He was, uh, I think he was one of the best directors I've worked with. I mean, through my experience at that stage, because I had done only two films before that. Uh -huh. um, he was a wonderful human being uh -huh. and a wonderful director. Are you having a good time here in Hollywood now? You're living here in Hollywood, I understand. Yes. Uh, you are? I've always lived in Hollywood. I don't know why people don't see you for a year if you're not doing You've always lived in Hollywood? I thought you lived in New York. And then oh, that was, no, I mean, this was about 1979 when Nin I did Star Trek. Right. Then I came, came to Hollywood. And you've been here ever since? Yes. I see. You don't go back to your own country anymore? I go every year uh, to do a film sometimes. Ah. You have a, we have an international film star next to you right now. He is Ed Fury. And Ed, it's good seeing you. Good God, I'm looking at you. I saw you 25 years ago in Rome. Yeah, at the Anglo de Roma. Ah. I think you were appearing there yourself. You were doing a comedy act. I was doing an That's act. Correct. That's, That's right. That's correct. And I'll never forget the night you lift me up in the air with your one <laughs> arm. He is Hercules. And tell me about your bodybuilding. My God, you've done more movies in Rome. Well, I've actually starred in 24 films throughout the world. Rome was my base. In Spain, too? Spain, Yugoslavia, Hong Kong, uh -huh. Egypt. Uh -huh. Tell me about Ed Fury, bodybuilder. Started as a bodybuilder? Well, yes. Uh, actually, I started writing my own material, my uh -huh. own musical shows, which I sang in, produced, and directed. Uh -uh. And, and then I, I, I was into athletics and also bodybuilding, which kept me in good shape and uh -huh. led to physique contests. And from that point, uh, Directors and producers discovered me for motion pictures. Did not know Ed oh, Fury yeah. was a yeah. singer. Yeah, oh yeah. Before oh, sure. well, Ed Fury. I'll tell you. Look at that. Uh, I did Fanny for Josh Logan on Broadway. I auditioned for him and I did Marius, the young singing lead. Uh huh. From that, two Italian producers in the audience saw me, came backstage, offered me the opportunity to star in films in Italy, which uh -huh. I did. And uh -huh. one year I won Best Actor for one of my films. D which one was that? Called Ursus. Who was in that? Which one was? Myself. That? And a girl named Maria Luisa Murillo, she's Spanish. Ah, actress. yes. Speaks 11 languages, uh -huh. writes in them. Uh huh. Then I did another film with Rod Taylor, which you'll see a clip of. I'd like I to believe, see it now, matter of fact. Called Colossus and the Amazons. Is it, is, what is it called? Colossus and the Amazons. This is the black and white version. There is a color, but I don't uh -huh. know where it is. Could it we went. see that clip? I'd love yes, to see it. it. Okay, show sure, it. I'd love to show see it, it again myself. Love to see it. <laughs> Rod Stewart. No, I won't let you. How can I let you throw your life away for nothing? I'm willing to risk anything to convince you that I love you and you love me. Because it's so, we must run away. Get out of here! No. No, Melita has a plan. It's all agreed. Oh, really? Aha. Uh -huh. Then it was she who persuaded you to enter the temple. Oh, what a fool you are. Melita is trying to destroy me. And you have fallen for her game. Even if that were true, we have no other choice. We must risk it. <clears throat> I'm sorry to butt in, but there seem to be some people collecting outside. I saw them in the shadows. Melita must have set a trap for us. Ah, I was sure that was it. Well, come on, get moving. No. I'm not going to run away. That would be an act of treason against my own people. And I'm not sure we can escape anyway. There's only one way out of here. There used Let's to be go. another, but it's been closed for years. There it is, but it's no use. Samson couldn't budge it. Hmm. That's what you say. This ought to do it. Watch me. takes is the right touch. Why, you blockhead? Why didn't you let him know? Who, me? But you said it wouldn't open. Glaucus, are you all right? It's open. Well, good for you. Shall we get moving? Fury, good yes. God.
Yeah. Take me back to Rome. <laughs> well, let's go make a film. I, no, I don't have to. I want to go there and retire. That's where I really want to live the rest of my life. I love Rome. That's well, the only so place. There's so many interesting things to see there. Is it that great? is why it never ends. It's the eternal city. It That's is. That's why it it's is an the old eternal country. city. It's yeah, but it's a new and, But it's, it's a young romantic. country, even though it's old. You're right. It's romantic. Ah, there is romantics in your life. But then, it really, it's see? like a village. It's like a village. It's not a town. Uh -huh. You don't get lost there. You know, it's it's around you every moment. Right. All of the ghosts from the past, the uh -huh. present, and the future are there. Uh -huh. You're with them, sharing it, living it, having a ball. Uh -huh. Well, you know. Who's some of the wonderful ladies you worked with at Fury and Rome? Some of the international s stars. Well, one one American Maddie? star I worked with is Elaine Stewart. Uh -huh. Remember her? Yeah, of course I remember Some her. On the ago. staircase, of course. Right, yeah. The famous yeah, movie she right, did with right. Kurt Douglas. Uh, <laughs> this other girl that I worked with that you just saw in the clip was uh, Dorian Gray is her name. Dorian <laughs> I mean, Gray? That's her name. I love it. There's <laughs> Danielle Rock and Jeanne Marie Canale was in this. Uh -huh. You remember Jeanne Marie Canale? Yeah. Fabulous yeah. actress. Yeah. Uh, I was to do a film with Sophia Loren, but that didn't work out, unfortunately. Parli italiano, yeah. or? Si, parli italiano, si. too, yeah, yeah. But, but no, no, but no. Ed Fury, no. your, si. your Italian movies are dubbed, all dubbed. Tell some me. are, some are not. How Depending. Well, here's how that works. Sometimes you're available when they're ready or not, you know, uh -huh. whatever. If you're not, then they get somebody else to dub if you're off doing something So else, the girl is speaking no Italian and you're speaking English. I'm, that, this, this is what's <laughs> a hassle. Uh, in this specific film, I'm speaking English, someone else is speaking Spanish, another one's speaking Italian, another one German, and another one, I don't remember the other language. Right. And you have to wait for the last word yeah. before you're able to give your dialogue. Uh -huh. So if you go to an acting school, they teach you to react back and forth. Here is a problem, because you don't know a language. How do you you're react? Looking. How do you How? react? You know your part very well. And you have to know it better than well. I see. For the simple reason, you have to emote. You have to give something. It's got to be a great continuity. Uh-huh. So I say it, it's good and it's bad because you're able to give and take in uh -huh. a very, very simple way. Uh -huh. And it comes across natural. Ed Fury, I'm looking at you. You look happy and seem happy. And you work out. Look at that oh, body of yours. You're in good condition. Well, I believe in a, a healthy mind and a healthy body. You see, this is what you have. You better take care of it or right. it won't take care right. of you. Mm -hmm. As I said to her earlier, you're dead a long time. You better have fun now and enjoy yourself. You take that's vitamins? what we're here for. You take vitamins? No, I eat natural food. Natural I'm a foods? vegetarian myself, of course. Uh, you don't eat meat? No, I don't. How about you, a person? Do you eat meat? Yes, I do, and you I do, love it. You do love meat? Yes. Do you really? Do you work out, Pers? You look lovely. You look yes, really good. Yes, I do, good. five days a week. You do? And now I work out with weights. So you do work out to take care of your beauty. It's very I just, important. I didn't before, but I, I've started knowing how important it is now. Uh -huh. And talking about uh, meat, in India, in my religion, which is Zoroastrian, we don't eat beef. Uh -huh. But when the cows, you eat, the right. cows are sacred. Sacred, yes. yes. Persis, tell me about yourself. You live alone? Yes, I do. You seem uh, very spiritual. I'm very happy. I have lots of friends, positive friends. Uh -huh. Do you uh, go to meetings? I understand you go to certain meetings to meditate. Is, yes. Is that, uh, does that help you a lot? Meditation does help me a lot. It has helped me tremendously. Uh huh. I see. Well, do you meditate? I meditate in my own way. I think positively. I you think, you're saying that word positive. Thinking positive is the most important thing it is, isn't it? Yeah, you For throw away negatives. Positive, a positive way of life. Negativities right. destroy you. They, they overtake you and do not allow you to work at your peak uh -huh. and become natural and become happy and enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of negativity, Skip, around. Uh -huh. And what happens is that um, we constantly say things uh -huh. like, I can't do this. Yes. And then we wonder why we don't do it. Yes. And a lot of people you meet start giving them their, their thoughts to you. And it's only their thoughts. I see. And it's like I used to do things that made me feel bad before. I mean, to please other people. Uh -huh. And now I don't do it, things you that... You don't uh, feel guilty. You don't guilty feel is guilty. Indian tradition. I mean, yes, it's yes. like carrying a cross over yes, your shoulders. Yes, yes, yes. Tell me something about health, uh, health and vitamins and all that. And, and you don't take vitamins, but no, bodybuilding. No How did you get into bodybuilding? Well. I liked you know athletics. It for Mr. America, like, yes, you know, yes. those magazines have I, I, I liked athletics, and I found I had a certain amount of excess energy, and I wanted to develop my body and utilize it. So by right. lifting weights, uh -huh. I found that this took care of that. Also, I got a reward. I got a nice build out of and it. And you are an and opera led, singer. Yeah, and it led to the films for me to do. Yes, I am but an opera singer. But an opera singer. Ed Fury. Right. I That's never right. knew Ed Fury was an opera singer. Never, never. I don't think the audience out there knows that you do 
to sing. You see, think. primarily, I, I, am a, I am an actor, a singer, and a writer. Where is Ed Fury from? Where here, are you from? Los Angeles, California. You grew up here? here? Yeah, I'm a native. There's not many around anymore, but you, you know. You grew up here in That's Hollywood correct. as a child. That's correct. That's Must correct. Must have been great in those wonderful Hollywood days. Tell me about those days in Hollywood. Where did well, you, you go know, I, Well, you see, I'm, I, I'm an orphan, so I don't know how old I was at the time, you see, way back then, so, you uh -huh. know, so I... <laughs> but no, way back when, like around, say, the 1950s and this type of uh -huh. thing, it was an entirely different world. It was like excitement. There were, there were new things to do, there were new, new places to go. Uh, the films were really booming. You had people under contracts to various studios Stock that were contracts, grooming yes. people yep. like Tony Curtis and Rock Hudson and people like yes, this. Yes. They came out and they learned to do this, that, the other. It helped them. They're, you know, they're a breed. Was that very breed. groomed at any studio? Uh, unfortunately, no, I was not. You weren't? No, I had three readings at Universal and I uh, had opportunities to go to and I went to New York, as I say, and I did Fanny and went on to Europe to do films uh -huh. there. Do you have any regrets in your life by oh, no. staying in Rome and oh, Europe? No. All these years? You don't oh, have any no. regrets? You know why? Because you meet new people, you learn new things, new customs. Uh, you expose yourself to a world. And the world is out there for you to see, to enjoy, to have fun with. So, Ed Fury, so, you would do it the same exact way? Oh, sure. Oh, certainly. Really? I'm happy. I mean, I was happy then, I'm happy now, I'll be happy forever. Persis, what about you? Do you have any regrets at all right now? By staying in Hollywood all these years? I think yeah. you should have kept moving to if London. I, if I die, tonight, yes. then I would say I have absolutely no regrets. So you're having a good time right now? Yes. What makes Persis have a good time? What does, what does it take to have a good time for Persis? Come I, have a, I have a link with the universe, mm -hmm. and there's a child in me. I communicate with the child, uh -huh. and I protect the child, and I'm beca I've begun to like myself. Like yourself? Yes. Ah, is that what you do, Ed? You like yourself, too, Oh, I too, always huh? like myself. That's, That's important. That's very, very important. I say this. If you can't like yourself, you cannot like somebody else. It starts with you. Yes. Uh -huh. It starts it's with a the person. That's correct. It starts you do, with you. You do a lot of television work here. You've I've done, done movies, uh, movie of the week. Which ones have you done? I've done Casablanca, Man with the Power, ah. Hunter, MacGyver. Hunter? Yes. Yes, that was a good one. Yes. But uh, Casablanca, which one was that? Who was uh, that? David Soule. Ah. It was a lovely episode. I really, really? enjoyed working with him. You enjoy working yeah. with David Soule? Really? He didn't push you around or anything like no, that? No, he was say. wonderful. <laughs> but and he's most a nice of the guy. actors I have worked with, they have been very helpful to me. I think maybe because I come from a foreign country, or they're very sort of protective and very Americans helpful. treat foreigners a little different. They do, don't you think so, They Ed? also get scared well, of being this, exotic. You see, you're a novelty here. Like myself in Europe, I'm a novelty. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're different, so therefore they like you uh -huh. right away because you have a charisma and you have right. a beauty, and it's different But they like here. me, but they're a little bit afraid to approach me. You know why I'm they're exotic. afraid to approach you? Yeah. Because you're exotic and beautiful. Uh, and I want to show, right. let's show the clip why they're afraid to approach Persis Kambata. Because you're so beautiful and exotic and different and daring from the wonderful film, Star Trek. Let's, let's see that clip of Persis Kambata. I'm by nature to observe and record normal functions of the carbon-based unit infecting USS Enterprise. Who is V'ger? V'ger is that which programs me. Where is Lieutenant Ilea? That unit no longer functions. I've been given its form to more readily communicate with the carbon-based unit. Why does V'ger travel to the third planet of the solar system directly ahead? To find the creator. We don't use it. I have recorded enough here. You will now assist me further. The um, Decker unit can assist you with much greater efficiency. Carry on with your assignment, Mr. Decker.
curses Kambada. That's so beautiful, spiritual, and loving. Thank Good you. Good God. Tell it, me about that. Changed your whole life. It must have. It, it did. It had to change your whole life. It was the best thing. Really? And uh, people were wonderful. And uh, when I first shaved my hair, Robert Wise and Gene Roddenberry gave me an electric shaver as a present uh -huh. so that whenever I had to go out, I could shave my own hair. I see. How long did it take Persis Kambata to have the hair grow back? Exactly one year, because after one year, I did uh, Nighthawks. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Nighthawks with, with, short hair. with Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. Oh, let's get great? with him. I love him. I think he's great. Yeah, his mother's wonderful. She's so Auntie Mame. Jacqueline She's Stallone. an astrologer. She is. That's what he told me. And I understand you do a little bit too, huh? I go to a lot of astrologers. You do? Yes. I see. You are a Libra. That's right. Ah, balance. Balance us too, matter of fact, because Ed Gemini. Fury, Gemini. I found out, is my same day of my birthday. June the 6th. That's right, D-Day, June 6th is 1980 my birthday. 1980 for me. I'm sitting <laughs> next to a man who is June 6th. My God, I'm a Gemini, triple Gemini. You and are? She, yeah, I'm a triple. And she oh is, a, can't you talk? You don't know which one you're talking to, right? <laughs> all six of them. All six of them. <laughs> I love it. Like my friend says, I'm a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great chatter. <laughs> it is, you're right. <laughs> I love it. Persis, I must tell you, that must have really change your whole life to shave your head. I mean, it must have been dramatic. How did you feel about it? I wanted to shave my hair instead of wearing a ball cap, but it also changed my life in a sense. Being a beautiful woman, people used to come to you for your beauty, and when I shaved my hair, I had more confidence as did a human really? being. Yes, because people came to know who I was. Because after taking the hair off, I mean, ah, people were more interested in knowing the person. person. That's interesting, isn't it? it yeah, really that is. It, that six is months. Very, I and used to shock people in the street. I would wear a hat and then in the middle of the restaurant. You used to wear a little band around the uh, ball here? Jewelry yeah. or hats or uh -huh. painting. And, and then I would take my hat off and people used to get uh -huh. sort of shocked. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. it was fun. But you were having fun. I did. Yeah. A lot of fun Love at that time. It's beautiful. Thank you. Get, now, what's new and exciting in your life right now? You got a new film coming up? Yes, Deadly Intent with Stephen Rails back. And Good. I'm doing another one next month. In um, Man Manila? Manila. Yes. Oh, you're going to the Philippines. Yes. Ah, I work there at Clark Air Base. It's nice there. But watch your purse. <laughs> ben, you work Italy a lot. Are you going Quite back? Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, I'm rewriting a script of my own now that I wrote some while ago, uh -huh. which I will star in and direct. Producers over there now arranging everything. Right. So we're going to do it in Italy and in France. Ah. And along the French Riviera, which is going to be a ball. I love Paris. Do you like Paris? I love Paris. I like Paris and I don't like Paris at the same time. Okay, I, uh, I accept that. I, I love I, Rome. You see, yeah. I guess, I guess Rome's I, my I'm favorite. a Roman at heart. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really, I'm really so fond of Rome that that's where I like to stay. Do you travel back into Europe a lot, Persis? Do you go back? I, when I used to be in London and New York, I used to travel a lot. Uh -huh. And now that I'm in LA, I, I think I just go for location shooting or I go to India every year to do a film there. Uh, you do, tell me about the Indian films now. I want to know, it's are the there biggest any difference? It's the biggest industry in the world, 700 films a year. 700 yeah. films. The yeah. only difference I find is that uh, the fact is, it's reality. They work, which is unlike here, like one, in one day they will shoot two hours for one Same. producer, uh -huh. and in the evening they'll go for two hours with another producer, so they do about another three or four true. films. Uh, Isn't that interesting? A day they change around. That's true. And it's nothing? a different system completely. When uh -huh. I go there and I don't do a lot of films, it's because they can never give me six weeks complete to shoot the film. They will say, would you come back in two yes. months later? And I couldn't afford to do They're that. They're all in English. No, in Hindi. They're in Hindi? None in English? There are some in English, I don't know. No, no they're all in Hindi. Not at all? I was it's approached for films there, I know. Really? Saying. You were? I, I couldn't do it. It's the same, the same thing. There and in Ceylon, they said, well, now you must come back. We will film and you must uh -huh. come back now and you will stay at my home if you wish. Uh -huh. And we can't do this and we can't do that and you must but do the other, you know. Skippy, it's, it's, uh, Indian actors have 60 hard. films. They are right. booked up till 1999. Right. I mean, they have dates given. I mean, you see a continuity in a film. Yeah. This man is skinny and then uh -huh. in the next movie he's fat uh -huh. you know I mean because it's shot one year later two years later <laughs> have you met Sylvester Stallone at never Murray? met him never, never met, him. met him I like him I think he's terrific well he's the athlete I mean, oh, of yeah, the well, 80s he, like you know you he were. has a lot of depth uh, he was on the uh, Barbara Walters show last I, uh, he's night very good yes. and we saw some of his paintings some of the paintings he does he's he's, he's very good he's, he's a very artistic he's a gentleman yeah he is you're saying the really word is. genius he really Persis is. Kabata, you're, right. he is you're using that word genius because I think for somebody 
to make it so successful. Right. He's and not just a blah blah. You he know, came rocking. from nothing. He He's came from nothing to something, and he did. And he has talent. He has intensity. Yes, He's he does. Terrific. I agree. And I think I think he should have won Best Actor for his first Rocky film, and he didn't. And he should have. You think he should have? Yes, I do. I see. He was great. Yeah, he was. He was excellent. And his mother is just a wonderful lady. Auntie Mame. Never Mame. met her. Never met her. She's Auntie Mame. You met her. And she is. <laughs> yes, she's wonderful, did. darling. She is a great lady. She's going to be doing her own show, I understand. I would like her to do my astrology chart. I mean, she's she very good. good. She's quite good, yes. Well, she died at Sylvester's uh, Road to Success, I understand. Oh, that crap astrology. in the paper they said about. Oh, no, no, she paper. said that he's going to run for president. That wasn't no, no, true no, 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 at all. But these days, yeah. even in India, all the actors are running for. Uh, Parliament and Congress. Every actor in uh -huh. India is now aiming to go into politics. So Persis Kambada is having a good time here in Hollywood. Yes, I am. I have some very good friends. There's a lot of Indians here. Yes, How about wonderful some. Indian restaurants in town. Are there good ones? Are there are a lot of them. There, the yes. good ones. Are there any good ones? Well, What's yes. Some good? Yes, there are. But I go to all of them. You do? <laughs> yes. yes? You Barney Daliano, you, 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 you cook Italian food, do you? Uh, oh, I cook up. Skippy Lowe looks at Hollywood. One of our guests today is Bernice Altschul, the personable owner of the famous Carlos and Charlie's Meeting Place of the Stars on the Sunset Strip. Neither a river, a bay, nor a car, our other guest is the talented Mark Hudson of the Hudson Brothers. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skippy Lowe. Mark Hudson, the Hudson Brothers. Three. Hmm. Where from? Originally Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Portland, I Oregon. love Oregon. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, America. I come from, no, not too many people know Skippy, I'm Italian. Deliano. No, oh, Calabrese Sicilian. Hey, Bella. Love Bella. it. And the thing is, my family migrated, obviously, from New York to Pennsylvania, and uh -huh. during Prohibition years, uh -huh. there's kind of a little, little scoop here, right. the whole West Coast for bootlegging was Tacoma, Washington. Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, and San Diego. My family, Italian, moved from Pennsylvania to Portland, Oregon, and that's there's actually an area in Portland called Brooklyn, if you can believe it or I not. I believe it, I believe it, but I, you know something, Mark? Mm. Northwest, beautiful, beautiful places yes. in America. Everyone in America goes to Europe, travels around, they should go up Northwest and visit that beautiful place. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. One of the best coastlines you'll ever see, I think. Yeah, I did it. Isn't it, I isn't loved, it just gorgeous? I loved it. So anyway, Mark, Canada. Went yes. to Canada or New York? What? Went to New York first. New York. New York first. Left home when I was 14 and a half my, with my mom's blessing. Uh -huh. You know, it was a very uh -huh. emotional sort of thing. As an know. actor or? No, no, as a musician. As the, all three brothers, too, which is weird. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in the middle. There's my brother right. Billy. Right. Was, we're 17 months apart, very close in age. Mm -hmm. She gave us her blessing. We went back east to do yeah. music. Yeah. Close, very close. Very, very. I mean, very uh, inseparable. I see. Our first, uh, really our first divorce as the uh -huh. Hudson Brothers is when my brother Bill married Goldie Hawn. Okay. was really the first time that we were ever truly separated. You're looking over there, Mark. I got to tell you quickly. The, the audience still doesn't know. But we have a lovely lady. My other girlfriend. Your other girlfriend, <laughs> Bernice from Carlos and Charlie. Bernice. Oh, 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 God bless you. I love it. That's Bernice, it. how are you doing? I'm just great. He's keep looking over there and I'm talking. Because we love each other. My is eyes, that what it is? My eyes is that what it is? My okay, eyes that's beauty. okay. I was trying to get the. <laughs> okay, you have my Bernice attention. looks wonderful today. Beautiful? Thank you. Where the stars meet, where that wonderful Carlos and Charlie's fun place. Isn't it a fun place, um, 
It's great. I, I'm there all the time. You want to find me? Oh, yeah, that's okay. great. I got to talk to Okay. Yeah. So the Hudson Brothers moved to New, New York, York, and yeah. then what Fail happened? Fail miserably. Yeah. Uh, we were too young, too green. It's all the paying your dues stories. Right, right. We came back uh -huh. to my mom in Oregon, uh -huh. got us back to health. Let's try Los Angeles. Hollywood, why not? Ah. My uncle was Keenan? The, the late Keenan Wynn. The late Keenan The late Keenan Wynn just passed away this last year. He was wonderful. He was really, it was my sort of spiritual leader to my future. Uh -huh. the, he took us in. His nephews, he said, come and live in my house. And there he was in Brentwood Park. And all, all three of you? All three of us. You know, he, you know maids, and it was a complete, uh -huh. we were completely out of our element. Uh -huh. um, his guests every night, every night at 5.30 was cocktail time, Lee Marvin, uh, uh, uh -huh. Robert Mitchum, Steve McQueen, and at that point it, it was impressive, but not so impressive because I was so young, I wasn't really aware. How about Van quality. Johnson? You missed Van, Van Johnson. Uh, no, well, Van Johnson was at that point was the, kind of on the outs because. Oh, was he? Well, he was. He, yeah, he was has Keenan's yeah. first wife. I see. Uh, they kind of like split apart a little bit, but we'd be sitting there after a few drinks. They all the lessons would come out. You know, Lee Marvin would start talking about acting. He goes, it's motion pictures. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You don't have to say a word. Oh, and see. all of a sudden, he would sit there with those great blue eyes, and he would do a scene with Keenan without speaking mm -hmm. that was just brilliant. Okay, Mark, i got to ask you. Go ahead. The Hudson Brothers. Yes. First television. Yes. Canada? Canada. We were, we were discovered. Mark Beard? Uh, uh, Chris Beard, now Chris in Bly. Beard. Yeah. We were found at a party down here. Right. Um, we were tearing down wallpaper to, st to stay in someone's house. What a place to be found at. Everybody <laughs> in Hollywood is yes. found at a party. Yes. Michael Feinstein found at a party. Oh, sure. But Liza see, Minnelli found him at a party. The, Go ahead. The great thing that happened to us was that the owner of the house said uh -huh. we could come to the party only if we finished wallpapering his den. Right. So we did, and we had no clothes. We weren't dressed or anything. Uh -huh. There was this huge party with Elizabeth Taylor and uh -huh. Elton John and all these stars. We were completely out of our element. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm sitting on the couch with this man, and he's just talking to me in conversation like we're having. Right. He starts to laugh. Thinks I'm funny. because you're a very funny guy. Thank yes. you very much. My brother comes and sits down next to him. Mm -hmm. Who's that? That's my brother. He starts to laugh that there's even another guy who's right. similar to me. Right. By the time the third brother sat down and said, this is my third brother, he was on the floor. So? He says, I want you to come to CBS and meet my partner, Alan Bly. Right. We only had one suit. One brother wore the coat, one brother wore the vest, the other one wore the pants. Uh -huh. We walk in at CBS, we meet his partner, right. and they say, let's do a screen test. Now, we'd never been in front of cameras in our lives. Uh -huh. Sat in front of cameras, played some music, and then they wanted us to do dialogue. And we didn't right. know camera one from camera uh -huh. three, camera two. Right. We started to argue, but like brothers do. Right, right. Bill, and it's him, uh -huh. like the Three uh -huh. Stooges. Uh -huh. Camera Very two, funny. Good. they used it. Uh -huh. Showed it to Freddie Silverman, who at the time was head of the network. Right. The next thing you know, we replaced uh, Sonny and Cher Brothers. in the summer. That's where you were, Sonny and Cher. Sonny and Cher in the summer. And that was the beginning. From that, uh -huh. we did Razzle Dazzle, which was, we were the first live humans on Saturday morning. Uh -huh. Pre-Pee Wee Herman. Before right. that, it was all cartoons. Uh -huh. Chris Beard and Alan Bly developed a show called Razzle Dazzle, uh -huh. which was a variety show right. on Saturday morning for three years. The Hudson Brothers. Yep. Comedy act. Oh, I love them. Aren't Comedy. They? Yes. they were funny. Actually, you know, it's funny. We were kind of, we did the Wizard of Oz in St. Louis in the Kenley circuit on, on uh, the ah, summer stock. Ah, Kenley. <laughs> now, oh yeah, he's great. <laughs> well, we don't know which one he is, but yeah, we, right, he's great. Right. We did the Wizard of Oz with Margaret Hamilton, the last time she ever played the witch ah. in, in, on stage. Yes. Uh -huh. We sold records out. We, it was a great uh -huh. thing. I did the lion. Great. <laughs> Pretty good, too, uh -huh. I might add. <laughs> and uh, she said a very neat thing to us. She said, you know something? You guys were born too late. Too late. Too late. Because she thought we were a throwback because we weren't just musical. We were comedic. We were dancers. We uh -huh. were, in other words, we kind of had the, the feeling of the old MGM. You, you better yes, be able to yes, do a little bit yes, of everything yes, or you're yes. not going to exist. I see. And the problem we ran into was that television was not ready for rock and roll. Because television would see us play rock and roll and they'd say, well, they're comedians, why are they doing rock and roll? Uh -huh. And then the music world would hear us do, <laughs> see us do television uh -huh. and say, why are they doing television when they're a rock band? So right. it be, kind of right. became a dichotomy. Ah, Bernice. Yes. Where are you from originally? The Bronx. Bronx, That's New York. Right. Oh, I Born love and the Bronx. brought up, had my you whole family. You have a wonderful husband, George. Oh, he's a doll. Everybody in this town loves George he's and Bernice. Great. Am I right? Yeah, uh, he's just a great. Just. We're Bernice. going to be married 40 years this October. 40 years. How many children do you have? I have two children, a boy and a girl. My daughter brought us out here because they had to move and uh -huh. we came with them. And my son lives in Texas and we have four granddaughters. Why do 
come from the, uh, I mean, to open a club so late in your years? Well, I took really over Carlos and Charlie's. I mean, that is a very popular restaurant. Busy. Yes. And you're there. You're very fortunate. You're there early in the morning. Eight o'clock in the morning to one two every ah. morning. Why, Bernice? Tell away. me, you love it that much? I love it that much, and I could do my bookkeeping early in the morning. What I could do from 8 to 10 would take me a, a whole half a day because uh -huh. before the phones start ringing and people coming in. Uh -huh. And uh, so it's just been wonderful for us. But I started as the bookkeeper, so everybody has a chance. No? Oh, Wait. yes. I worked 30 years for one man as the bookkeeper That's in New great. York. 30. One job out of high school uh -huh. and uh -huh. stayed with him until I moved out here. I see. In fact, I left when I had my children. And I then see. he called me back for three days and I stayed another 19 uh -huh. years. What kind of food? <laughs> Carlos and Charlie's. I got to Oh, it's, it's continental. It's, not just, it's no. not just Spanish or Mexican. No. It's everything. It's right? continental, I say, with Mexican flair and uh -huh. Mexican dishes. All our fish is fresh. I love to say one thing. The people that work yes, for Bernice all are just lovely. The We're waiters, very the bus boys. I mean, We're like a family. All, it is a family, isn't yes, it? Yes, and everybody feels very warm and welcome the minute well, they come your in. The it's actually fun to go there. What I notice is you go there, like uh -huh. you get this feeling of it's not just being in a restaurant. Right. That these guys they greet you and sit you down, and uh -huh. then you yourself and George. Uh -huh. It's almost like you feel you could go in there with a dirty T-shirt yeah. and tennis shoes and yeah. feel like you're having a meal at right, your exactly. aunt's or your uncle's house. Yes, it's true. It's great. But the birthday. Everyone who goes there for their birthday, every, yes. all the waiters come tell me. out. My daughter, she had her sweet sixteen. Did she? Yes. Oh yes. yes. It's a good place for a birthday oh, party, isn't yes. it? Yes, we have our our terrace room, which is just uh -huh. great. And we have a great, wonderful wrap parties, all kinds of parties. Now you have right something there. here on a Monday. Weddings night. also. We've weddings. We've had weddings there great. with the rabbi uh -huh. and the minister performing the ceremony. I love right it. There. <laughs> you have from yes. That's right. Thank you. He's helping me with all. I understand you're going to have a children's show there on a Friday and a Saturday. Sunday and afternoon. Sunday afternoons, we want to do a puppet me, children's show. What's that all about? Well, Tell we me. could have birthday parties if there's For X kids. Amount, enough uh -huh. children. They could have it privately, otherwise little individual How parties. Nice. And have a nice puppet show oh, no, for the great. children. It should be a great, uh, it's something real. Tell we're me, new. and that's where Joan Rivers is. Yes, she um, does. That's her workshop. workshop. Right. She left the E Little Club, searched all over Hollywood. And came to Bernice. No, before it. I got to tell you, before the little, after the little club, she went to the Horn. Yeah, but it didn't work out. It didn't work out. But she Maybe. came to you. Well, I got to say, honest. Go yes, but I was able, I was fortunate enough to know Bill Samoth. Right. And I approached Bill and said, we're now doing shows upstairs. I Do you see. think Joan would be interested? Well, you're the one who approached her. Yes. I she, I, no. Ah, okay. No. Well, that's good. That was great. And Bill said, we'll try it. We didn't know how it would work. And from the day she opened, she, she has a it. yes, she has a full house and standing ovation. Uh -huh. And the public love her. You remind me of Joan Rivers a Can little. we talk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also <laughs> won the ring That's as right. one of the lookalikes. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Did you, re uh, you did the lookalike? Yeah, she had a lookalike contest. Oh, and wonderful. she won. That's wonderful. But the network had Mark, do you write yeah. your own material? Yeah, I do. For most part, yeah. Um, when I was doing the Late Show and stuff, music... That's what I was going to ask you, but yeah. no, first of all, oh, yes, you're, for, you're, you're coming, or, you're coming. Yeah. Yes, everything that I, that I usually do, I write, and I'm still working on occasion with one of my brothers. You are. I like, I like working with other people. You know, it's like Ernie Kovacs or Sid uh -huh. Caesar uh -huh. and, and the Mel Brooks, right. Doc Simon. I think right. that when you get a bunch of people sitting around that it generates an energy and yeah. an excitement and a twinge of competitive. Uh -huh. You know, as a comic, and I'm not like a stand-up comic right, at all, right, no. but you tend to... If you tell a joke, Skippy, I want to just see if I could do one just a little You're bit better. You're an entertainer. I kind you of, really, I, yeah. I would call you an entertainer. Wouldn't you say, Bernice? Yes. How about Carlos and Charlie's? Mark, give us a night. Hey, I'll and give you weekend, a night. weekend, I think it oh, would really? be fabulous. <laughs> well, why don't you? Oh, I, I, haven't, I haven't decided you to haven't do decided. that yet. No. But anyway, Mark, Joan Rivers. Let's yes. get dropping to Joan Rivers. Yeah, well, Musical director on Joan Rivers' show, right. The Late Show. Yes. It was fabulous. Read it. How, a year? Yeah. Well, I mean, a year and a half for me. I mean, I was there. From the she very, very she beginning. She asked for you. Yes. Well, the way that it worked out is I'd worked, I'd known Joan for many, many years yeah. with my brothers. When we were on the road, we'd always cross paths and stuff. Finally, when it came down to doing the show, right. um, I was under the impression that I might just get the opportunity to write the theme song. Ah. Because the competition was so high. You know, People Manilow, were trying to get the, yeah. Oh, everybody wanted the well, job. Uh, they knew it was right. going to be the show to do. Right. So I had a meeting with Fox, and I guess I didn't think that I had a chance. Yes. So my nerves were down, uh -huh. my cockiness was up, and I kind of went there and said, here's my theme song. Uh -huh. If you hum it when you're sitting on the john, it's your theme, and I uh -huh. walked out. Well, next thing I get a phone call from Joan and Edgar saying, Mark, what did you do in there? And uh -huh. I thought maybe I said the wrong thing, when uh -huh. in fact I'd said, 
yes. the right thing. Yes. So Joan went to the network and said, this is the guy that I feel comfortable with. Great. This is the guy that I want to be. Why, she, why do people put her down? And success, they always do, and they have, they're so successful. What you, happened at Fox? You know, well, Come on, okay, I, Could you be honest with oh, us? Oh, yes, I could. As a matter love, of fact, I think that it's a story that has not really been dealt with yet. Okay. I think that when you take a Joan Rivers, you are dealing with a very powerful woman. And right. right there, that doesn't sit well with a lot of people, just the fact that she's a woman who is, in fact, that powerful. Right. Right. When they first signed her to do the show, she was under the impression that she could, was allowed to be Joan Rivers. Now, the Joan Rivers that we know is kind of brash and kind of sassy. In the same time, she's a wonderful mother right. and a very sensitive woman. Her, eye, she can cry, she'll, her eyes will well with tears. If you, right. She's very, very, very emotional. Yes. Yes. She was under the impression that Fox was going to let her, her do that. Free. Let her do yeah. that. Right. So, and they were going to give her three years of the contract. And don't worry, Joan, you're, we're the flagship of a uh -huh. brand new network. There were right. no things right. at all. We're, she we, started it. Yes, we were it. Okay. We were she the first show yeah. of, of the new Fox network. Right. Now what happened was Fox had a different sensibility of what they want. They wanted to be the network with class and they wanted to be, and they didn't want Joan saying, who are you sleeping with? Or being who she but was. But that's her personality. Of course it is. Therefore, Can't frustration, her. frustration set in nice. first. Secondly, her husband, the late Edgar Rosenberg, yes. was a powerful man that loved her to the point where he would do anything for her. As far as the protection is concerned, not only was he, he working with her, it was his wife of 20-something years that he was in love with, and he didn't want to see her I be see. handled like that. I see. So he went out on a limb saying, you, we, you will not get away with this. Joan was emotionally tied because it was something that was promised to her that was supposed to be very, very positive. Right. I was there from day one, and I started being even involved in some of the meetings when it started to get kind of hairy. We don't want you doing this. We don't want Edgar here. We want, and I could see what it was doing to her. Uh -huh. She would get nervous. She would get upset. Yes. She was depressed and not happy. They also started to say that the ratings of the show, Joan, you're only doing a 2.9. We, you got to do a 3.5 yeah. yeah. or you're Pushing not. her. But that's, that was the, yeah. you know, that was their intention. You know what ends up happening? They did not have a prime time, uh, for the network yet. Yes. Now, as we all know in television, primetime gets the big ratings, and by the time you get to Johnny Carson and the late night programming, you drop considerably. Right. Well, Joan was doing a 2.9, sometimes we would do a 3, depending yes. on the guests and that sort of thing. They said, we, we need a 3.5, you're not doing well enough. Right. This was before they had their primetime lineup. Yes, yes. Once their primetime lineup came out, their primetime shows were doing a 2.1. 2.2, and their late night show with Joan Rivers was doing a 2.9. Unfortunately, they had already gotten rid of her yes. before their prime time, time came, out. came out. So they therefore, it was, yes. she, it was like, a it was a scapegoat. Now what happened... Did they really liked her, Mark? Come on. At Fox. The, did did they, they really like Joan Rivers at Fox? I, I, think in, I think in the beginning that they thought that she was going to, I don't think they ever thought she could compete with Carson. I don't think, they that, always, was, they, they don't never, think that was the intention. No, I thought that they knew that she was the most powerful comedian female in, the world. on, on in, television, in the world. television, as we know right. it. Exactly. Therefore, what a perfect way to break that bottle on the ship, right. but with Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. What ended up happening was the big mistake that they made, and this is an executive decision, and I can't say where it came from, yes. they let go too soon. And what they did in the meantime was they destroyed her soul, yes. because you know, as an actor, yes, as a comedian, of course, of course. what you are is all you've got. Yes, of and course. they made her something. They tried bitter. to make they her. They made her bitter. And something that she wasn't. Right. She's not. not no, really. And because of that, you know, she, as you all know, you know the death of her husband, yes. as well as the the cancellation of her show, yes. was a pretty devastating thing. Now I, I can't say whether the blame to that goes to Fox or the show or the blame goes to whatever. All I do know is that if that would happen to our mom or to my sister, yes. I think it would be time that the press and, and certain people would relinquish that. It's been a very difficult year, and I think yes. they should leave her alone. I mean, The Late Show now, I finished The Late Show with Arsenio Hall. Right. After Joan left, yes. we were in trouble. I mean, we had like guest, really host, were. guest host du jour. Uh -huh. I was stationed on Suzanne Summers' cleavage. Uh -huh. We had Louis Anderson. Uh -huh. it was, every night was somebody new, yeah. and we could yeah. not get continuity to the show. Yeah. We finally find Arsenio Hall. Mm -hmm. He was good. Great. Oh, he was, he was great. He was young. He was hip. He yeah. was innovative. But they didn't like him, though. No. 13, they gave him, this is what happened. They said Why? to him, I'll tell you, we as a staff, you know, the bad thing is about networks, 
when a show isn't working, yeah. they'll fire the set director and they'll say the show didn't work because of the set director, as opposed to the original concept, right. which probably is the network executives. I'm shocked that a head has not rolled at Fox yet. Has not rolled yet. Uh -huh. In the meantime, they get Arsenio Hall and they say, well, Barry Sand is coming yes. out to do From New York, the Barry, infamous yeah, uh, yeah. Wilton North report, which right. lasted three weeks. Yeah, dreadful. And they said, you guys are off the air anyway, <laughs> and this is the truth. They left us alone uh -huh. for 13 weeks. We, uh, Fox executives, they were at lunch. And that show with Arsenio Hall that we did yeah. was virtually all of us. And cool. at the end, they tried to get him. He was ready to do a movie with yes. Eddie, Eddie, Murphy. Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Didn't want to do it. And now, it was, now the show they've got, they have Jim and Tammy Baker and they're exploiting yeah, their eyelashes. And Tim, Jim and Tammy Baker have the gall to talk about their pain I know, and sorrow. I saw it. So you want pain and sorrow? Talk to Joan Rivers about her last year, and you'll see tr there's true pain and sorrow. Whether my eyelashes. She really are is, the, Mark. She really is hurt. Yes, she is. And and, and I got to tell you something. And I would say Poor this baby. to an audience. Yeah. You know, she's a very tough woman. She's a very lovable woman. She's everything that I. Why do we Americans crush? people like that. Why do we do that? Why uh, is, why? Do you, do you know why, Bernice? No, they, I don't think there's really a reason for it. But look where she is now. She's doing Broadway. Broadway. Broadway, and she's happy as a lark You now. know her very so, well, Bernice, don't well, you? Well, I, you know, you, we, you, working with her has been, she's a woman that expects nothing. She comes in as big as she is, all ready to go on, uh -huh. asks very little. And I think here she is given her an opportunity to act and perform on people that can't afford to go to see her in Vegas. Right, right. You know, it's put her in another wonderful line. No, you know what else it's really done too? What? It's it's the healing process. You have a husband yes. who has passed away, you have a show that has been canceled. Yes. You have everybody in America looking at you to make that that next wrong move, not yes. the next right that move. Right move. You know, they don't want that right no, move. No, my uncle Keenan They always like that wrong move you're on right. someone. Like when you're you're right. My they uncle Keenan's dad, who was Edwin, would always say, They only know you by failure. And they don't want to remember the good stuff. Well, Joan Rivers now has, I think, and I hope, that she's made a very good decision. She's gotten out of that house, mm -hmm. her, her life with the late She's gone show. to New York. She's We're gone to New, New York. York. Where New York is happening. And, right. she's doing, and, she, and also another great thing, and I hope it works for her, she's taken a step to do something. She's not the brash comedian yeah. standing up in mono against an audience. Yeah. She's not doing a late night show. Yeah. She's not doing Vegas. She's become an actress in a Neil Simon venue. Yes. And it's a complete rebirth. And all I can say is I know that New York loves her. You know, the show was just about to go to, we were gonna go to New York uh -huh. with the late show. And we and New York loves Joan Rivers with a That passion. late show went to New York would be the biggest, biggest hit. ever on television with Joan Rivers yep. because that's her audience. Well, she's finding that See, now. See, the Even audience in California are not Joan Rivers' audiences. No. They're no. not. No. They're not hip enough. They're not, right. it's not hip enough. I don't want to use that they word hip enough. It's they don't not, have electricity. That New York, they no, I think, just I think it's, excitement. They don't know. You're They're right. Not, you know what it is, Skippy? It's, a, it's a, life, aware. a life outlook. You, he, you, you know, here, you, you go to a baseball game, you don't get Cracker Jacks and a hot dog, yes. you get Perrier and Perrier. Avocados. Isn't that corny? Oh, of course it's it is. It's so corny. In New York, you have the telephone and the car. You see, but, the, but when this. you look at Joan Rivers, she talks like we do. Yeah. It's yada, 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 a mile a minute. Hey, you talking to me or what? It's New York. And all of a sudden here, it's like, oh, totally. Isn't it corny? They don't know. No. They don't know. They're all plastic. Everyone's plastic here, and I really. They're missing out. They should go to New York. You so know what it comes down really wanna, what is it? You know what it comes down to? I think that we live in a mono weather vein. In other words, right now we're sitting here in whatever month, it could be March, yeah. it can be December. It the can same. be any it's, it's, it's always the it is, same. It is one. Same. It's thing. the same thing. So I like that four seasons. Oh, you kidding? I when, love it. When the leaves turn. I love it. <laughs> oh, isn't it beautiful? Don't you miss New York, Bernice? You've been here I, how many years now? Uh, 13. 13. 13 years. June will be but 13 go back, years. Do you? Do you go I back go back occasion. We're going to see Joan for her opening. Yeah. We're her flying opening. back. When does it open? June twentieth. Yeah. June twentieth. We're going back. For oh, her. I bet you're excited. And, she, yes, and she's so excited. You know, I just think you know. In closing, about her, I, I I get kind of emotional about the subject because not only am I a personal friend of hers, you know, her manager Billy yes. is a very good friend of all yeah. of ours, and and I knew Edgar, and I knew that Edgar. What kind some, of man was Edgar? Well, you see, some was people, he? some people, it works two ways. Believe me, I had my ups and downs and my right. ins and outs with right. him. But you know something? He had one thing in mind. This is my wife, and I'm going to protect her, protect her no matter what. what. And yeah. you know something? He protected her from me or from anyone else that would get too close. Oh, and, you, and you might take that as being tough. Yeah. Sometimes but they it's say, not tough. hey, no. they say Francis not Ford right. Coppola is tough. You know why he's tough? Because he knows what he wants. Edgar Rosenberg really knew Joan right. Rivers. Barbara knew, Streisand knows what she wants. She's, and you might say that that's, that's difficult, difficult, but when the final result comes yeah. out, and it's Joan Rivers uh -huh. being that funny and that great, 
whatever it was that Edgar Rosenberg uh -huh. was, he made a lot of enemies, but he also had a lot of friends. Yeah. And for the few friends that we all can cherish, uh -huh. if they truly know you, yeah. everyone else is just an acquaintance. How did she pack that room in Carl's and Charlie's? I mean, California, but a lot of Easterns came to see her up there, didn't yes, they? Yes, it's a mix. It's a mix? It's a mixed group. We have some, everybody. You know, some outrageous, you know, in, in nightclubs, she becomes a little, mm, because <laughs> nightclubs, you can do it and get away yes. with it. She you understand? Well, no, and I love it. I think, well, yes. she's, you know. She gets a standing ovation yeah. every night. The people just love her. Do they? Yes. And right. and she's now also asks, do you want to know anything? She answers questions at the right. end of her show. She does? And, yes, she does. And you have Timothy Leary there also. Oh, yes. Timothy Leary. Oh, Doing yes. a comedy act at Carlos <laughs> and Charlie's <laughs> upstairs. And on computers. It works with computers. Is that what he does? He talks yeah. to he were, isn't that interesting? Yes, yes Timothy Leary. Really. Yeah, that's fine. You know, another thing about Joan too; she's very experimental. You know, she comes from a second city sort of uh -huh. sensibility. Right. So you're dealing with a woman, and, and I got to work with her. She did a, a Showtime special uh, yes. on Heidi Abramowitz, which they didn't like the director, and she asked me. Right. I ended up directing the, yes. the special for, her. and in working with her, uh -huh. and this was a whole different. Way, you know, working with her as the sidekick musician right. was one thing, uh -huh. but being there as a director and hearing her concepts and her jokes. You're dealing with a woman who is truly progressive. I, mean, I compare her, and I've said this in the press before, to a combination uh -huh. of Nancy Reagan and Lenny Bruce, which is yes. a classy sort of woman who can get down and really be pretty... I worked with her. Oh, did, oh, did I you? Had the, well, I had the showcase at the E Little Club when I first arrived from Vietnam. Yeah. And... Uh, 73, uh, her and I were at the E Little Club together, 74, 75, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we were there for a while yeah. until it closed. She used to work Fridays and Saturdays, did yep. her showcase before she moved to Carlos and Charlie's. I had the showcase on Sundays and Mondays there, yeah. my talent showcase. Right. That's where I brought them. Yaka Shmerinoff, I had uh, Michael Feinstein started oh, with really? me. I had them all there started That's with great. me. Loretta Holloway, they all started with me there. That's and great. it was a lot of fun then, those days. Yeah, yeah, we see, you know, I think that what we're starting to miss now in, in Hollywood in general, and this is not just necessarily in the music world, right. I think that it, we're missing this in the acting world as well. I like to read up. You know, obviously, with my uncle right. being keen and wait, you I got are an actor too. Oh yes. In fact, as a matter okay. of fact, the, the series that I did called Sarah, right, uh, for Gary David That's Goldberg right. on NBC, is coming back starting June first. Oh, it is coming. Nine thirty on NBC. I'm, I mean, it's reruns. Uh huh. But they're showing. They're going to reshow the fourteen. I remember show. that, Mark. Yeah, that I played the next door neighbor. I it was wonderful, Mark. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks. It's re. It's going to be re. Uh, Reissued now, probably because of the writer strike, I'm uh -huh. sure. But you know, the cast was Gina Davis, who's now yes, going to do right. great film, Beetlejuice and The Fly. So you do like to do acting. Oh yes. I Oh, is I that your it. first love? Well, I don't really think I have one. I think that I think that that you said an entertainer. I think that if I could do a love scene, uh -huh. and then as I'm holding the girl in my uh -huh. arms, sing her a song, uh -huh. Uh -huh. it's like a throwback. You have a great scene. face. I think your face. I think marvelous. Yes. Well, actually, marvelous you know, so a lot of people. Comedy. If you're a good comedian, you're a good a dramatic actor. It always works that way. You, is that you, true? You find it. As a matter of fact, you know, my brother Brett. Doesn't Im he's another fan of yours? He does an imitation of you, which I have to send you. <laughs> really? It's very fla well, it's the best form uh -huh. of flattery That's is when it. someone's I doing understand. it. I understand. He does an imitation of you that is amazing. In fact, I practice to do the show <laughs> with, my with my brother Brett being you. I'll have to send you a tape of it. I love very, very good. Brother married to Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn. He's my oldest brother, Bill. Bill. They were married for six and a half years, two children. Uh huh. People always get me confused too, like you know. Because they think yeah, you we were married. Them I up thought with you were married. Go ahead. No, I know I wasn't married, and I've never slept with her either. Never slept no, with her. No, she never asked me, but I will if she <laughs> well, just calls me. Then, you know. Never too late. No never possibility. Late. Bernice, what's happening at Carlos and Charlie's now? I mean, children, th uh, you're going to have children's thing? We have the children's theater. We do a lot of wonderful showcasing. We'll right. have you every Sunday, Sunday night, nights, which right. is I'm just there great. Sunday. Because but I feel there's so much talent out there. We right. have on Wednesday night, Rocket Entertainment. Rocket, and, yeah. yeah. On Wednesdays, we, yeah. Yes, and we have great comedians and singers. In fact, Lloyd Pat, Coleman books the room. Yes, he uh, produces it. And, uh, and in fact, June 1st, I'm going to be the announcer. Oh, <laughs> you're Would you like some material for me? Okay, Bernice is going to co-host uh, co the Rocket that's Show. Great. I think it's, it's wonderful. Great. I'll, I'll be the announcer that's for the night. That's another very nice. important thing. They're very, you know, there's a lot of talented people in this industry, uh -huh. and that goes from actors to writers to musicians. Right. And I find that it's so cliquish that it's very, very difficult sometimes to break through. And, uh -huh. I, and I think that people like yourself, Skippy, as well as you, Bernice, there are so many, sometimes you see uh -huh. that one young kid, yes. that one smiling face, or that one idea that could turn the smallest person uh -huh. into a huge Married. Star. Married? 
My Wonderful wife. wife. Yes, children. Wonderful. Nieces, children. Two that I know about. Two, huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> I have two girls, Sarah and uh -huh. Melanie. Sarah, you named the girl yes, Sarah. Yes, Sarah. And the problem, you know, I'm going through is being Italian that I am. Uh -huh. I suffer from terminal sort of. You probably Italiano. Oh yeah, right. you, you do. Know, more, I understand more than I speak. Yeah, I, me all too. the dirty I do words. Too. My I grandfather too. and grandmother. I yeah. know all the swearing. Uh -huh. I have a daughter now at 16 years old, uh -huh. and she's beautiful. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, hey, Melanie, who had a sweet right. 16 at Bernice's, and I don't want her to date guys like me. Uh -huh. So I have this sort of like, anyone that comes to the house is, hello, Mr. Hudson, sir. Like, uh -huh. totally, uh -huh. we're just going to the movies. Uh -huh. Oh, no, you're not. Uh -huh. I know exactly where you're going. So I'm, I'm dealing with that uh -huh. as a father, even though I consider myself hip. Uh -huh. I'll be.